And now, here's the veteran voice of the legal fix, Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live from the Lone Star State in Montgomery County, Texas, for a brand new episode of The Legal Fix, a new age radio show presented by the Tough Law Firm, the toughest law firm in town, with the toughest lawyers around, answering your toughest legal questions. Introducing first, hosting out of the red corner, the big deal, Bruce Wilson, tough, joined by Boy Wonder, Brandon Scott Riley, and super lawyer, G.I. Jerome, the golden boy, Jeremy Lee Hall. Thank you, Bruce Buffer. I'm the eraser, Paula Hughes. The eraser. The eraser. Here with Boy Wonder, Brandon <laughs> Riley, and super lawyer G.I. Jerome, the golden boy, Jeremy Hall. We can answer your questions online today if you'll call our hotline at 936-900-2381. Today we'll be discussing Commissioner's Court with special guest Sarah Countryman, a two-term mayor of the city of Montgomery, a conservative Christian, and a proud fifth-generation Texan. Sarah, welcome to The Legal Fix. Thank you so very much. We're so glad to have you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, you started out well. I am the second term mayor of the city of Montgomery. I'm a fifth generation Texan, a conservative Christian, and I want to be your next county judge. Um, I have been in Montgomery County for about 10 years. I've lived all over the state, and I have since being mayor the last four years, transparency and accountability has been my top priority and goal. Uh, when I first became mayor, the city didn't really have a vision and a plan of where it wanted to go and what it, what it wanted to be when it grew up. And so we have just now gotten a comprehensive plan, started an in place and a vision and, uh, that will be evergreen to take us further into the future to 20 to 30 years from now. And uh, that's one of my proudest, uh, proudest accomplishments that uh, together as city council and city we worked on to to get accomplished in my four years very good so next on your list of things to accomplish is judge for montgomery county is that, that correct you are correct and that's a little bit Go ahead. yeah that's not a judge that rules in court cases right not sending anybody to jail thankfully uh, <laughs> that's a uh, <laughs> chief executive of the county position that is right. It's, it's just like the mayor position. It's public policy and budgeting and collaboration with all departments and ensuring that our citizens are safe. Safety is number one priority along with infrastructure. And what is your panel called that you sit on if you're elected county judge? Commissioner's Court. Okay. And how many members of Commissioner's Court are there? So including the county judge, there's five. Okay. And we have four precincts and then the county judge. So there's five members of Commissioner's Court. And you are the leader. Okay. And so anyone who is a registered voter that lives in Montgomery County can vote for county judge. You are correct. Why and should they vote for you? Because right now this county is in financial hardship. And although we are a wealthy county, we've got a lot going on. We have not been good stewards of the taxpayer dollars. Um, not only that, but during the pandemic, the state of Texas gave 12 counties uh, money to help out CARES Act money to help those counties and uh, their instructions were to give $55 a head per capita and we are the only county of the 12 that did not follow the directions of the federal government and Governor Abbott and so the current county judges kept that and the commissioners have kept that money and quite frankly I feel like they've plugged their their deficit in their budget uh, with CARES Act money and even the county attorney as well as the county auditor has so there's potentially over $40 million of a clawback the federal government is going to be getting. So these are things that I don't think that the current uh, position has done well with our, our taxpayer dollars and our COVID dollars, amongst other uh, spending, spending items that um, are a bit concerning, quite frankly. We heard a lot about that in the recent incorporation referendum in the Woodlands, especially as it relates to the relationship between the Woodlands and Montgomery County and emergency funding. Do you have any insight or any plan for your relationship with the Woodlands <coughs> or any opinions on the recent incorporation election? So the incorporation election, because I'm the mayor of Montgomery, uh, I only was in, uh, 
worried about Montgomery, quite frankly. I, the Woodlands, y'all need to do what you want to do. If you want to incorporate wonderful, if you don't, wonderful. I don't believe that I would have any bearing or need to give an opinion about that. <clears throat> However, um, I do have a relationship with those on the township and have met with them actually talking and discussing about the lack of uh, disbursement of the CARES Act money and how much that impacted them. Mm -hmm. And um, quite frankly, I have not yet met one community leader in the Woodlands or in the county, i.e. mayors and council people, um, that are happy with how we were not given the rightful uh, financial support that that was intended. Mm -hmm. And we want to know where our money is. Okay. Besides reform, what else inspired you to run for county judge? I just love Montgomery County. Um, I didn't think I would love a place more than my home county of Williamson County. I grew up in Round Rock, Texas when it was a little one-horse one town, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and now it's thriving. Um, yeah. But I came here, and I truly have met some of the best people on earth in Montgomery County. We've got such big hearts. People are willing to roll up their sleeves and jump in and help out their neighbor. Um, you don't find that anywhere, everywhere. Um, I also love the fact that we've got, although we've got large towns and cities, we have that small town touch and the proprietors behind the desk that you're talking to that actually owns the business. And I think that that is still very special and you don't find that um, in a lot of places these days. So I want to also help this place. We are uh, growing quickly and fast in a fast pace and I just don't think that we are um, addressing those needs um, on the way that we should be. Okay. Tell us a little bit about your background. I see that you went to um, Concordia University, but before that you were at Sam Houston State University studying criminal justice, and you spent quite a bit of time in the tech industry. Mm -hmm. Tell us about your background and qualifications. Sure. So my dad was a federal probation parole officer and then FBI when he passed away, and he was my hero and I went he went to Sam Houston he, he got his master's from Sam Houston in criminal justice and so I wanted to go do the same thing and uh, I was actually part of the last class that got to tour the walls unit in Huntsville mm. um, it was a pretty interesting um, is that I, a prison yes it is yep the federal prison there and uh, so um, I ended up going back home for the summer and stayed there with Concordia Lutheran wanted to be a nurse and took a uh, <laughs> class in nursing where I had to go into an operation and I woke up in the recovery room. Blood is Same. not my thing, Same. so change. <laughs> Hard pass. <laughs> yes, exactly. I would not be good. So um, actually, I, I went to a job interview at Dell and my young life leader was my interviewer and he said, Sarah, this is perfect for you. And uh, he said, at you know, 22 years old, are you ready to work 70 hours a week and make $70,000? And I said, sign me up. And so he did. And me and my roommate both got a job at Dell and uh, worked bell to bell, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Wow. And home sales and uh, didn't take a day off. Um, I'm very competitive and I wanted to be the best and see my name on that leaderboard. Um, and then through, the, through that, I have grown up in the IT industry. I've done some other things in sales, but sales, um, I've learned where collaboration is key, Silo, working in silos and within an organization just like government. So whether it be one of my customers, a large global customer, and you've got all these different independent business units, um, putting them together and have collaboration and working together and maximizing your dollars uh, is key. And I don't see that collaboration. I see a lot of siloing here in the county. And if we can work together, you can get much more done, as well as if you've got a little bit more money in your pocket, Precinct 1, and you're willing to share it with Precinct 3, let's do that. Mm. Right? And and let's work and help each other out. At the end of the day, the dollars that come in are everybody's tax dollars. So well, We, have, we need to leave it there. We're going to take a short break. But when we return, we'll put our guest on the hot seat. The hot seat. Hot Can't seat. wait. A rapid-fire cross-examination where she'll answer our toughest questions as fast as she can. We'll also answer your toughest legal questions, so call our hotline, 936-900-2381. I'm Bruce Tuff, principal of the Tuff Law Firm. We are a full-service law firm serving the greater Woodlands area and the greater Houston area. Contact us at 281-681-0808. We're tough for you. 
Go to YouTube.com on your smartphone, tablet, or PC. Subscribe us on YouTube at Radio The Boss 91.1 FM. We all want to protect what we love. And we know that child safety seats and seatbelts save lives. Yet three out of four kids aren't buckled in correctly. And in 2016, 42% of Texas teens who died in crashes weren't wearing a seatbelt. Don't be a statistic. If you love it, click it. That includes you, too. Buckle up. Every rider, every ride. One final time, here's the veteran voice of the legal fix, Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. Attorneys are licensed by the State Bar of Texas. Our three lawyers cross-examining the witness are Bruce Buff. Brandon Riley and Jeremy Hall. And when the action begins, the witness on the hot seat will answer as many questions with the fewest words as fast as they can. The hot seat is sponsored by The Legal Fix, a new age radio show brought to you by the Tough Law Firm. We're tough for you. And now... For those listening on the radio and Legal Fix fans watching around the world, this is the moment you've all been waiting for. Live from the Legal Fix studios in the Woodlands, Texas, it's time! One lightning round for the undisputed legal fix hot seat championship of the world. Thank you, Bruce. Welcome back to the legal fix. I'm the eraser. The eraser. Do it now. I am Boy. substituting today for the big deal, Bruce Tuff. I'm here with Boy Wonder, Brandon Riley, the golden boy, Jeremy Hall, and our special guest, Sarah Countryman. Call our hotline at 936-900-2381. Now, we're going to put Sarah Countryman on the hot seat. Hot seat. Before we swear in, I just want to compliment your glasses, Thank all your butterfly shades. Those are really nice. Thank you. I appreciate that. Very <laughs> countryman of you. Very countryman. Yes. Okay. Have you seen the hot seat before? I Sarah? have. Okay. So you're prepared. You know what's coming. I've studied. You're going to serve as the witness in a rapid fire cross examination where you'll answer our toughest questions as fast as you can. You get one free pass thanks to our champion, Paul Hughes, the eraser. <laughs> the who, eraser. Who abused the pass rule. One free pass. <laughs> She's also the record holder. One yeah. question answered every 2.5 seconds. So that's your After benchmark. accounting for penalties. Yes, yeah. after accounting for penalties. <laughs> the average is one every five seconds. Have wow. fun. Answer as many questions as you can. State your full name for the record. Sarah Christine Marshall Countryman. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, in your version of the truth, to answer the most questions with the least words as fast as you can? I do. She's ready. She's ready. How do you spell countrywoman? C O U N T R Y W O M A N. Nice. Are you behind the Cooper Mini Countryman? Did, I am. Did your, red. your father in law invented the Mini? He did. Nice. Do you drive a Mini? No. Are you the debutante heiress to the Country Croc Fortune? I am. Are you the Paris Hilton of butter? It's fake butter. Marjorie. Looking like it. Your life is well documented in the 1982 movie Countryman, starring Freshie Richardson, right? Yeah, that's where the American couple crashed that plane in Jamaica, and then they kind of swept it under the rug to, to win, win the election. election. Right? Yeah, it sounds yeah, familiar. Yeah. That's a biopic about your life, right? <laughs> it yeah. is. It's, it was in my uh, eight ball fortune. Yeah. Countryman. Countryman. Are your political ambitions inspired by John F. Kennedy's final words? Ask not what you can do for your countrymen, but what your countrymen can do for you. A hundred percent. And you just told us you're running to represent every country, man, woman, and child in our community. Exactly. Specifically Montgomery County men, women, and children, right? Yes, within our borders. Okay. The fellas on the legal fix will be your fellow countrymen. Yeah, I'm more of a city man. Yeah, so you're <laughs> a city slicker for sure. City slicker. Should we put a wall up? You said our borders. Should we put a wall up around <laughs> Montgomery County? Uh, no. Okay. 
Uh, we like our visitors. Yeah, you matriculated at Sam's Club State University in Houston, right? That's right. Are you still a member? No. And what's y'all's mascot now? Bearcat. Bearcat. On wow. mascot applications, do they tend to identify as bears or cats? Do they roar or meow? D, all the above. How does it sound? <laughs> <laughs> nice. And, and before y'all were bear cats, you were the normals, right? <laughs> Same um, Houston State normals, yes, yeah. y'all were. And that's a strange mascot choice, right? Truth. Highly unusual. I, yeah, the abnormals, right? Yeah. yeah. So on the legal fix, we're on a crusade to rid this and any other worlds of animal violence. So time's up for Sam's Houston's clubs. What's y'all's rally cry? Pass crickets. <laughs> <laughs> it says here the bear cat is a ferocious South American predator and it sits erect on its haunches. Yeah, and y'all try to keep mm. one as a pet, but the animal no, was right. quickly dismissed. Apparently, it wouldn't stop acting like a wild animal. So yeah, relieved of duty. That. It needs to hit the showers. <laughs> God, you're fired. <laughs> Don't let the door hit you on your way out, you wild, filthy animal. Filthy. Animal. Time's up for the bear cats. You aren't pets, you aren't mascots, you were born free. Born well, free. But but in Texas, <laughs> we can hunt them, right? So yeah. he probably needs to watch his back. Yeah. Yes. Are you a sorority Look, girl? I am not. Were you a good kid? Always. How old were you when you got your ears pierced? 16. You weren't born a countryman. You just married one. Bob countryman. Bob's the real countryman. I was born a marshal. <laughs> but you married Bob sure, countryman. Marshall. I married Bob countryman. Okay. On your resume, it says... Um, Actually, I married Brad Countryman. Brad. Oh, it says Bob. Yeah, it says Bob. Oh, it, says right? Bob. No. it says Bob on your profile. Bob. Yeah. Oh, it must be no. must be a misspelling. Oh. We're just, no, it's we're just mispronouncing it. Yeah, How's it pronounced, Paula? Brad. Hey, I may go home and he's gonna say, "Who's Bob?" <laughs> Is it country man or country men? It's country man. Countryman. 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 Mm. Countryman. Next. How, how big is his side of the family? It's very large. Is there anything you wouldn't do for your fellow countrymen? I can't think of anything. You bore him Sloan, a strapping young countryman, to carry on the family name. That is correct. But it, she's, she is, uh, she's more like me, though. But, so she, it, but they like to gang up on me. So is, countryman, uh, is Sloan a countryman or a countrywoman? She's a woman. Okay. In the spirit of gender neutrality, will you change your name to country person? No. <laughs> your community, your city, also gave birth to the Texas flag, right? Yes, ma'am. We're very proud of that. You trademarked birthplace of the Texas yes, flag. Yes, I did. Hmm. Are you the Betsy Ross, then, of Texas? Of course. Did you sew the original Texas flag in your cabin, peddling your singer by candlelight? A fellow countryman did. Okay. What's your weight? Under a 500. What's your God-given hair color? You're looking at it. Are you currently wearing a permanent? Negatory. Why is your hair like that? What do you do to make it look like that? Flattener, straightener, <laughs> Isn't it and true? Rave for Mega Hairspray. Isn't it true you wear glasses just for style? No. What's your eyesight? Terrible. Do you have any other handicaps? Yes. What this, are they? I have a bunk right big toe. Uh-oh, bunk. <laughs> this Halloween, will you go as Baby Shark? Are you asking me? Yes. Okay. The Cheshire Cat. I'm going to go with Baby Shark. How about Betsy Ross? Of course. Caitlyn Jenner? No. <laughs> the country croc margarine mascot, Marjorie Taylor? Ooh, perhaps. And Jemima. W one more. What about Penelope Garcia from Criminal Minds? Maybe? Don't know her. Do you have a will? I do. A prenuptial agreement? No. How much money will it take for you to retire? Too much. What's the most humble job you've ever had? A fried chicken. Sum up, philosophy. Sum up your life philosophy in a word or phrase. Oh, boy. Um, live large, be truthful, be honest, and uh, I always say smile and wave. Nice. Prayed so. Smile and wave. Smile and wave. So, say you're the apex predator atop the HOA food chain, the Queen Karen. Queen Karen. <laughs> yeah. Do you prowl the neighborhood looking for violations? Negative. Chainsawing mailboxes? Snipping hanging plants? <laughs> no, I'm just looking for tall grass, like... So but you I just draw. send letters. Yeah, you I, just wag your pen at them. I am no longer on the HOA. That was harder than being mayor, I'll tell you. you so you're I already the it. mayor of Montgomery County. It's a city named Montgomery in Montgomery County, right? That is correct. So it's like Montgomery, 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 Montgomery. Montgomery, yes. Montgomery, 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 Montgomery Again, Montgomery. people emailing me all the time. Do you, live the on, County. do you live on Montgomery Street in Montgomery Estates? 
in the office in the Montgomery building? Real close. <laughs> so you give a flag to everyone who opens a water count in Montgomery, right? Yes, sir. Sweet. I just opened one. Where's my flag? Me it's too. in my bag. I want it's a flag. Bag. Me three. Okay, I've got I want three a flag. for you. <laughs> flags, 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 flags. <laughs> How many flags have you sewn or distributed? We have distributed close to 500. Wow. So you're a super I'm fan. That. You're a super fan of historical sites, right? I am. You're like a monument groupie. I am. I Monument groupie, sure. I like What's monument. What's the best one in Montgomery? Ooh. Your we favorite. have 17 historical sites. I am not going to, I am not ever going to tell you the top one. <laughs> okay. Just for fear of a, uh, no way, because we've got a very uh, strong historical society what's and, the worst uh, like one you'd never go to again i love all of them okay next I would never pick favorites that's like picking kid favorites yeah no way. <laughs> which, which country woman in the primary spends the most time at the salon um me okay how about the least um probably john hayfley he's bald john hayfley <laughs> Assuming you're the top country woman, who's the next best broad on the ballot? Second That's best general Hayfley. Oh, you know what? I have made so many good friends. Um, I think all these ladies are exceptional. Can I take them all as one? Yeah, you can. Okay. We'll accept it. The next best skirt. Ooh. Um, Echo had a great skirt on the other day that I complimented her on. Ooh. Echo. High five. We called High that. High five. Yep. Echo. We knew that would be your answer. Whoa. What's the meanest thing again. you've ever said to a fellow, fellow countryman or woman? Get out of here. I don't want to hear it anymore. Get on out of here. Get on out of here. Have you ever made a country man cry, a male country person? Um, while in government or just in part in Just in general? life. Oh, yeah, yeah sure. Bob? Okay. Did when? you make Bob cry? It's been it's been a while. Okay. If you could live anywhere else besides Montgomery, 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 <laughs> Montgomery, Montgomery, Montgomery repeating of county, course. Uh, where would you live? Somewhere in the Hill Country. Top unchecked bucket list item. Mm. I want to go to the Maldives. Favorite nice. political movie or show? Maldives. Uh, Fox News. I don't watch movies. Mm. Your favorite place you've ever been? I think Carmel is so precious and awesome in California. I think it's a, it's a little sweet spot over there. Carmel. Betsy Ross or Joan of Arc? Oh, Joan of Arc. Joan of Arc or Joanne Linzer? <laughs> Joanne Linzer. American flag or Texas flag? Texas. Texas flag or Montgomery County flag? Texas flag. Oh, sorry. I, Montgomery oh. County flag or Montgomery City flag? Montgomery City. Who's smarter? But Montgomery County too. So. <laughs> so who's Let smarter? Me back. You or the Texas flag? Uh, me. You or Betsy Ross? Me. What's a better pet, an American eagle or a German shepherd? Answer carefully. Ooh. Mm -mm. Ooh. Can we go with Labradoodle or? Uh, okay. Golden Doodle? Yeah. That's. Okay. Top Would you pet. rather eat Kim Kardashian's used cucumber slices, listening to drunk voicemails from Ye, or pound so much Popeye's Megan the Stallion sauce, you bankrupt her TSU scholarship, the <laughs> Megan Fun? The Megan Fun. It's Megan the Stallion. That is so tough, but I guess I'll go with the cucumbers. Yeah, Kim. Uh, 100 Yard Dash, you versus Mark Keo. Keo. Are, are you carrying one or two flags? I'm carrying five, six, seven flags. Anything I've got on, I'll have. I have flag pants. I'll nice. Be, is that, is that, would that count? Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah, okay, more good. flags, the better. So flags yeah. can be weaponized. Do you harpoon them like Jaws or Tanya Harding as shins? Ooh, a harpoon. Harpoon. Would you rather wrestle <laughs> you wolves with Liam you Neeson go. or chase predators in the jungle with Arnold? Answer me. Do it Arnold. now. If it would ease, we kill it. Get down. Get to the chopper. General Kirby <laughs> playing in the jungle. Rusty Harden or Tony Busby? Rusty Harden. So these high-powered high lawyers uh, took the intimate confessions of more than 40 massage escorts and turned them into court filings. What's up with Desha Deshaun Watson's massage obsession? I guess what he's real tight. a tongue twister. Yeah, why does that guy need so many massages? He likes a lot of hands Just on sore. him. Yeah. So mm. is it time's time up? For Deshaun Watson, Time's or will up. he have at least one happy ending in Houston? One more happy ending. Oh, I think he's, he's had all of his happy endings in Houston, hasn't he? <laughs> nice. Let's hope so. Did you well, love you. the hot seat? I love the hot seat. Nice. Like more. Good, Good job. <clears throat> Good I'm job. The there. Okay. Very good. So transitioning over, we'll jump over to some hot. We're gonna topics. go right into our third oh, wow. segment hot with topics. no break. No break. No hot break. topics. And Brandon. Okay. So the Supreme the Court seat. came down with one case. I believe it was yesterday, and this case was a confrontation clause issue. And so 
the majority ruled that is that when you get in a fight yeah that's when so you don't have to back down somebody's after you so when you stick you. up for yourself we're not even going to let him do oh, this. Shit, <laughs> <is> <laughs> the Sixth Amendment confrontation clause allows you the right to confront your accuser. So if a witness is going to testify against you, they have to do so in such a manner that you have the right to cross-examine them. Mm. So in this case, an individual got a plea deal for the shooting death of, of another person. In his plea deal, he made incriminating statements about another guy. And that other guy was tried and convicted on the crime based upon the testimony from the previous case. Mm -hmm. The witness that gave that testimony, the guy that got the plea deal, was unavailable out of the country. And so the question was, does that violate the individual's confrontation clause rights? And the Supreme Court justices said yes. And then, of course, Thomas dissented and said that they failed to bring up the argument, so he waived his Sixth Amendment rights. Uh, but the other majority said, yes, for sure, this is a confrontation clause issue. So you do still have the right to confront people in criminal cases primarily uh, as witnesses to cross-examine them in this situation. So big deal for criminal justice and, and the right ruling, I believe. But in other news, Brazoria County attorney just got indicted for embezzling client funds. Hmm. So Brazoria take care of County. your IOLTA's attorneys. Yeah. <laughs> Let me go back to the confrontation clause real quick. That's Why right. is it important to be able to ask questions to somebody who's testifying against you or giving information in court? Well, if you don't have the opportunity to confront that witness and to pick apart or show the holes or flaws in their testimony, then you have a one-sided you have a one-sided witness that the jury, who's the ultimate fact finder, doesn't get to weigh the credibility of that witness. And so they got to present this evidence from this guy that got a plea deal and was charged with a weapons charge as opposed to murder. He gave you know, self-serving evidence or testimony that benefited him and got him off the hook for the criminal charges for murder. And now his mm. testimony that was self-serving is being used without any right to cross-examine him to convict another guy of the same murder. And that's, and that's like hearing only one side of the story. Right? right, exactly. I mean, it's like cutting and clipping a recording from someone just to hear the best parts, or in this case, the worst parts about you. Right. And it doesn't even matter that his testimony was taken, it was probably taken under oath, this, this what, affidavit? No, because at the time the charges weren't filed against the individual, and so this individual was being uh, tried for a crime, and he didn't have the right to confront his accuser that accused him of being a part of it. And it doesn't matter that it was sworn by the other guy. Doesn't matter. No, you got to no, be able to. Matter. In civil cases, that does matter. In civil cases, you don't have the same constitutional rights, and they've carved it out to be specific towards criminal rights. And you do have some rights in a civil in a civil proceeding. But those rights are much more limited, and they don't rise necessarily to a constitutional right as the criminal case would. Important. Yeah, yeah that is important. Something like in OJ, where they used testimony in the civil case that was garnered in the criminal case against him. And so the civil case he loses, the criminal case he wins, right? And and we see this we see this in law practice all the time, right? Yeah. Even outside of court with our own clients. They come in, they tell us about their case, they tell us their side of the story, and then if there's another side of the story, like the opposite side of the V, the other litigant, then we usually the hear that from v. opposing counsel. And so we learn early on not to take everything our client says on faith or as the exact specific way things occurred because then we hear from opposing counsel a totally different mm -hmm. story. And I've heard the phrase so many times, the truth is somewhere in the middle, in the middle. right? And that's why we have juries and fact finders. And that's why you have the right to confront the witness, because they're telling their side of the story. And you could open up a whole other side of the story by just getting to ask them questions. So that's right. important. It is wow. critical. Now, flipping back over, Ms. Countryman, mm -hmm. how do we find you and your what? And your how do people get in yeah, touch with you? Your campaign. So um, I've got a website, Countryman4, the number four. County judge. And it is countrymen with all of our country woman, uh, country yes, person. It's, it's country, country man. man. Country, country man. Yes. A woman named countryman. That's right. Okay. And That's so what's your good, website? So it's book. countryman for county judge dot com okay. or Sarah Countryman for Montgomery County Judge on Facebook. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Very good. When's your next campaign event? So I have a meet and greet coming up next week in East County, and then I also have a meet and greet at Joe's Italian on the 31st. Okay. Are there any other debates between you and uh, Judge Keogh? 
Yes, sir. So we are about the halfway mark. We just had our sixth or seventh last night, and we'll have another six or seven in the future. Mm-hmm. Wow. Early voting so starts Valentine's Day. You, the harpoon flag. I am. I'm going to. I think I'm going to wear my flag pants, too, just to see how that works. Nice. Yeah. Birthplace. Yes, yeah, so V for voting, V for Valentine's. Yeah, Some people February are saying 14th. V for voting, Valentine's, and Vino. Okay. But that's how you remember it starts name. then. Yeah. Very good. Two well, weeks of early voting, 14th through the 25th of February, mm-hmm. and then election day is? March 1st. Tuesday, March 1st. March 1st. That's right. Thank you for tuning in to The Legal Fix, brought to you by the Tough Law Firm. Call our office at 281-681-0808, visit toughlawfirm.net, or ask a question in the comments below. You can watch past episodes and highlights at toughlawfirm.net slash the legal fix legalfix.show coming soon for the latest please subscribe to our youtube channel and connect with us on facebook instagram and twitter tune in to 91.1 fm the boss fridays at noon i'm the eraser paula hughes substituting today for the big deal bruce tough with boy wonder Missy bruce hope BW. your dad's okay brandon riley and super lawyer gi jerome golden boy jeremy hall we'll see you next week for another episode of the legal fix <laughs>